It's so easy for us as adults to dismiss or minimize what children feel. And part of the reason is children don't always have the means to articulate what it is that they're feeling. And it can actually be very scary when they don't know why they are behaving in a certain way or why they are feeling in another way. Welcome to the Feelings Farm Where feelings bloom and grow Pay attention to their whispers They'll show you where to go Nothing lasts forever Though sometimes it might seem so The Feelings Farm is an adventure with three kids who are on an excursion and they somehow end up getting lost in this mysterious place called the Feelings Farm. They encounter many different emotional landscapes and they learn different kinds of ways of walking through feelings. Feelings can be very complicated. So you can have not just one feeling, but three feelings all in one. Sometimes it's very hard to pin down one feeling. When we talk about emotions, when we talk about feelings, it's very, very important that a child understand that I have choices to explore. Otherwise, the child will always feel stuck. When a child feels that way, the child may end up not willing to explore that emotion. I like that the techniques explored in the workshops are a variety of music, movement, um, dance, art and writing. They get to explore their strengths in a way that's most intuitive or comfortable to them to express their emotions. In working with the children, not all of them play music. But nobody is afraid to come up to the piano and say, this is what loneliness feels like to me, or this is what fear feels like to me. Music is so innate, so there is no better art form to start exploring the world of feelings. We spend the first couple of years of our lives expressing how we feel through our voice and also through our bodies. Movement is so important because it bypasses language. And it's okay if you can't articulate it with words. There are so many other ways that you can show it. Giving children that language from a very young age is so important because they realise there are ways to listen to a feeling, to learn from a feeling, and they're not just this daunting thing that feels bigger than themselves. When they experience certain difficult emotions, it's okay. So the adults that are with them need to give them that space, allow them to sit with it. I was working with a child who was drawing sadness. So she drew a river to represent sadness and she spoke about how her father was away and wouldn't be there for her birthday. And in that moment, there was just such a purity and transparency in her feelings and she just welled up with tears. So I just sat with her, walked with her through that feeling. For me, I told her that when I'm in a place of sadness, I see the beauty in the thing that I'm missing even more. And so she decided, okay, let's draw some flowers coming out from the river banks of sadness. Then she started writing down things that made her really happy. And by the end of it, she was just laughing and she was proudly able to share with the group this emotional journey that she was on. This creature represents jealousy. I drew poison because when you feel jealous, you can do something very bad to the person you're feeling jealous of. I think it was quite astute when she said, you know, it's an emotion where bad things could happen if it was left unnoticed. But if you do notice it and you do talk about it, you can potentially solve it. I think that was quite profound. So this is called Web of Worry. It shows what I worry about. I worry about my parents, my friends, and my pets also. I worry about my homework, and here's extinction of animals and nature. I also worry about things here and spelling. I was surprised at how children open up so easily and so much faster when they are drawing. Sometimes they just say the most profound things and you realise, I cannot believe a nine-year-old just told me that. I'm super duper proud of our children being able to contribute to Esplanade's final production. They need to believe that their voices can be heard and there are other adults interested in how you feel, interested in your emotions. Feelings never stop and they get more complicated it seems. And it is difficult. How do you explain to your child, to someone who's younger than you, 
that you're sad or you're grieving or you're angry or you're frustrated, how do we start to articulate those feelings? So that's why I think seeing Feelings Farm is so important because it does start that conversation. It's not just a piece of children's theatre. It's been written with the adults in mind as well. We have a responsibility to take care of our children's emotional worlds. I hope that the adults who come and watch it will recognise what they have to do for themselves as well as for their children. And I hope that it encourages conversation. What I really desire is to see compassion coming out of this play. Compassion for other people going through difficult feelings and compassion for ourselves. I think the most important lesson is we're not stuck in a feeling. That's actually a very empowering truth for both adults and children to know. There are ways of walking and journeying out of a feeling. Whatever happens here, remember feelings come and go. Feelings come and go.